25 minutes before 10 o'clock. Beautiful Friday morning, and William F. Styles is in the studio. William has become one of the, uh, the the great motivational speakers on these airwaves, and we're so proud to have him as part of our lineup. He's a real estate agent and, and speaker, but let's turn that around, at least for this half hour, because he is a very talented speaker, and I guess that's all I'll need to say. Let me put this picture on the video and say good morning, William. How are you doing? Hey, good morning. Um, thank you for having me. I, I have a very important message today, and here's the bottom line. Your problems are opportunities. All those problems, all those things in your life that you wish was not there, all the things that you're like, God, please take this away from me. Um, I hate this. I don't want this in my life. If I could just get rid of this man or this woman or this job or this, this health problem uh, or this fat body, if I could just get rid of my neighbor, uh, life would be so much better. I'm here to tell you today that your problems are opportunities. They are all giving you tremendous opportunities. You know, I went to a house yesterday. I met with this woman. She, um, she called me. She's selling her house. And during our conversations, she shared me, with me that she was given three years to live. So here's this woman with the most tremendous challenge and, and problem that you can imagine, like losing your life. Like you're no longer going to be here on this earth within three years. Can you imagine getting, getting that news and how tore up you would be to know that you have three years to live? But as we talked about this, uh, we kind of explored some of the benefits and the opportunities that she gets to live with that most people don't. And so I remember saying, like, how cool is it to have a three-year notice? How cool is it to have a three-year notice that you know you've got three years to live, that you can put all of your arrangements in order, you can say goodbye to everybody the way you want to, you can live those last three years the way you want to live. Not like the rest of us live, you know, working in jobs that we hate, you know, tolerating people that, that we don't like, you know, just drifting through life, you know, not even going after our goals and dreams, you know, because there's always tomorrow. But when you've got three years, you have the tremendous opportunity, the tremendous gift and the benefit of knowing I've got three years. Not, most people don't get that, that gift to know, but we all have a clock ticking. We all have a clock ticking. I mean, even right now, we just don't know what it is. We don't have that same gift as this, as this woman um, has received. Another benefit she gets is, is now when she's in a traffic jam, she can look around with peace in her heart and just be grateful to be alive. She lives with a, with a vitality, with an energy, with a gratitude just for the little things, just looking up at the, at the sky and saying thank you for today. Thank you for this life. Thank you for my problems. Thank you for my challenges. I would not trade it for anything. I've only got three years left to live. So today, I am going to appreciate what I have. I'm going to appreciate the trees, just the, the green out there on those trees right now. I'm going to appreciate the beauty that's all around me right now. Now, do you think this woman would be appreciative of everything around her if she hadn't have received a three-year notice that she was going to be passing away? I would say no. I don't. You, the listener, most people out there do not. We all are drifting through life. We're all, we always got tomorrow. It's like, you know, we've got all these problems. Our lives suck. Um, you know, there, there's just no purpose to it all. But the moment you get a three-year notice that you're going to be leaving, all of a sudden you get the tremendous benefit and the opportunity to enjoy every single day. So I really love that, and it really touched me yesterday. <clears throat> seeing the benefit um, and the opportunity that this woman has received. Now, I wouldn't choose that for myself. I absolutely, I just want to be clear, would not choose that for myself or anybody else to, to get that news today. But all the thing, all the challenges and problems that are coming into your life, how many of those do we choose, really? So we're all the time getting problems in our lives that we don't want, that we didn't choose. But once they're there, they're there. 
I mean, we ha you know, instead of running away from them, pushing them away, I mean, we have to accept the fact that they're there and see the opportunity, see the, the gold mine that's sitting right inside of our problems. We're accepting reality, and we're facing reality, and we are seeing the gold where it is and taking advantage of that. You know, I'm 39 years old. I remember being uh, 19, not having a clue what I wanted to do with myself as far as a career. I knew I wanted to be a speaker. I knew uh, I didn't really have any skills or, of speaking. You know, it's not like I was a professional speaker. I just knew I had this dream in my heart that I wanted to speak and touch people's lives. But I wasn't good enough. I mean, in my heart, I'm like, uh, or in my mind, actually, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm fat. I don't make enough money. There is no quality, no quality that would give me the right to be able to stand in, in front of people and, and speak to them. So for 20 years, I had this dream just sat in my heart, sat in my heart, because I wasn't good enough. In my mind, I was never good enough. There, I was always unworthy of following my dream because I had these problems in my mind. I had these challenges. I was, you know, no matter what was going on, I could beat myself up and say why I was not good enough to create my dream. Until one day I started looking at my opportunities. I go, wow, okay, I've got some tremendous opportunity. I mean, I want to touch people's lives. So these challenges, all the challenges that I've gone through, all of the, the depths that I've went to, all of the, the, um, the, the battle with depression and, and all of these things now have shaped me into a very compassionate, understanding person. So that when I talk to somebody now and they're sharing with me their addiction or their challenges that they're with, I can stand there in a spirit of, of non-judgment. I can stand there in a spirit of, I understand. I have my own stuff. You know, I have my own issues. I get it. I understand. And so the reason why I tell you this is because your challenges shape you. The challenges are, are shaping you into the person that you want to become. So what is your dream? What is it that you want to create? And how is this challenge that's in front of you right now, how are these, these problems that are in your life right now shaping you and helping you and benefiting you to achieve your dream? What is this problem giving you a chance to do? There's benefits to all problems. I'll give you, I'll give you a few more examples. The, the, when you have problems, they give you the opportunity to bring out your best self. They give you an opportunity to bring out your strength. Maybe you're, you're playing small. Maybe you're sitting on the couch right now watching TV all day long thinking, oh man, I really wish I'd get out and do something, but I just can't. I'm just sitting on the couch. And then your landlord comes out and they give you the eviction notice. That's a big problem. That's a big challenge. But what it's doing is it, it's, it's putting a spur under you. It's giving you the opportunity to, to, do the, to have the strength, to express the strength to do what you want to do anyway. And that's to get out and make something of yourself. So challenges give you opportunities to bring forth the strength that you want to have in your life, to bring forth the patience that you want to have. It reminds me of, a, I remember thinking, you know, hey God, you know, I want these big biceps, right? And so God doesn't just zap you with biceps. When you ask, when you pray for biceps, you're not just zapped with a big bicep. No, you're, you're, giving the op, you're given the opportunity to go to the gym. You're given the strength to go to the gym. When you pray for, for patience, you're not just zapped with the ability to be patient. You're given challenges that give you the opportunity to express patience. And as you express patience, you develop that skill. So I want you to be able to see your problems in a way that you can look at them and say, thank you. Thank you for coming into my life. Thank you for the patience that you've built. Thank you for the strength that you've built inside of me. Thank you for the character that you've built inside of me. Thank you for the compassion, the love, uh, the non-judgment that that I've been able to build in my life, I'm a better person because of you. So thank you. Right now, 
Like you'd ask some questions. Well, I like what you're saying there. I, I, th I think uh, looking at problems as opportunities is a very smart thing to do. I, I think the challenge would be to see what those opportunities are. Do you have any recommendations on how, how do you take a problem and identify what the opportunities are? You need to ask yourself some questions. You need to sit there and you really kind of have to have an idea of where you're headed in life. So if it's your goal to complete your college degree and um, be a leader in, in corporate America, and yet here you are with no money, you don't, you, you're having a challenge even getting to school. If you ask yourself the question is, how is this, how is this uh, problem benefiting me? How is this problem benefiting my goal? How, what does this problem give me the chance to do? And just immediately when I look at that situation, I would say, hey, by you overcoming that challenge, you will have not only a story and a reference that, hey, if I can do this, once I get out there in the, in the business world, I will be able to motivate the people that I'm in charge of. And as they encounter their own ch challenges and their own problems, I'll be able to share my story. And so the story of my overcoming my problems and challenges of going to school, of getting my degree, of getting this job, will then, can then be used as a tool to help the people that are working with me. So uh, you know, I said a lot there, but I really want to come back to it's the question. You've got to ask yourself, how is this problem benefiting me? How is this problem good for me? How is this problem serving me? How can I benefit from this problem? So that's really what it comes down to, man. You gotta ask yourself those questions of how is this challenge benefiting me? And then when you come up with the answer, I can promise you right now, if you will ask those questions and you will answer them, there will be a, a power that will spark inside of you that will excite you. Because now instead of being defeated, now <laughs> instead of now you're, you're, you're defeated like, oh no, poor me, I can't do anything because this is a problem. And now when you see like, whoa, okay, wow, I, this can really help me then you get really excited about life. So please, I, I implore you to ask yourself that question, how is my problem benefiting me? And then answer it. Uh, people are sometimes comparing themselves to others. They see some people being successful and they try to follow that other person's formula. How do you get that person to see that it's not gonna work for them because that person has their own style how do the how do you make the individual get their own style to be successful you have to know that you're you're not a mistake you have to have faith and understand that you were built the way you're built for a reason when you try to copy somebody else you'll never be successful as a copy of somebody else you weren't built as a copy. So what do you, what do you want to do? You want to be an uh, inadequate copy or an excellent original? So I would tell this person to get to know yourself. What are you good at? What are your God-given talents? Maybe you have a talent for asking questions. Maybe you have a talent for listening. Maybe you have a talent for loving. Getting in touch with who you are and start appreciating what you bring to the table and then no matter what career you're in whether you're a doctor or a real estate agent you can bring those gifts with you and you can say you know what I am not perfect but I'm pretty darn amazing and you can apply your your strengths in whatever career that you're in and you get to the point where you don't care about others because you understand they're pretty amazing too in their own right and you're not trying to compete with them on their strengths because you're better than them also in your own in your own ways the uh the program you're listening to right now is hosted by william f styles william is a very talented and motivational speaker and he does offer himself as a speaker at your events and uh just take a moment if you would william and and uh give out a number so people can call you and uh, of course and you're, and you're sponsoring this segment yourself with your real estate company yes uh you can reach my office at 352 282-3080. That's 352-282-3080. If you 
if you have a, a group or you have anybody that just needs to hear a message of hope, just needs to, who is maybe you're involved with a group of people who are just down and out and they just don't see the light uh, in their life at all, um, you invite me in to come in and, and speak. Uh, I would be more than happy to do that as a speaker, a message of hope, a message of um, you can do this, uh, and it's just a message of, of seeing yourself as as a creator in this life and not as a victim so uh, i definitely encourage you to give me a call that is my real estate company you will reach my um my office they will ask you if you're selling a house because i do own the company mr ocala buys houses my website is mr ocala buys houses.com uh, i do buy all kinds of homes ones that need repairs and one that do not need repairs so definitely if you're looking to sell your house give me a call i would love to work with you and help you i'm also a real estate agent with ocala realty world who i love because they have the most heart and soul and i consciously chose that company because i love them do you travel will, will you go outside of marion county to give your uh inspirational for speaking, speaking yes because it's my calling it's why i'm here my real estate career is the purpose of my real estate is to financially support my speaking um so i will travel anywhere to do speaking real estate i'll travel to the uh marion county line <laughs> <laughs> well, let me, let me uh, ask you to um define something if you could or, sure. or or maybe delve a little deeper into something in in the part that you talked about in the beginning of the show today you mentioned problems and you mentioned gifts and so i'm going to use a metaphor and to ask you a question the metaphor is this the problem is the house is on fire that's the problem the gift is the fire hydrant <laughs> okay uh the the tool to use that gift would be i guess the hose and then the, the wrench and everything else so i mean using that as a metaphor um, when you have a problem, let's say you're, the example you gave, somebody being evicted from their home, the, they use a gift. And you mentioned the gift, but it's easy to see the fire hydrant as the gift in, in my metaphor. But it's not always easy to see your own gifts. How do you know which gift is going to get you out of that poverty so that you're not stuck being evicted? Well... I don't know if this is going to answer you directly, but this is what's coming up for me. When your house burns down and you're forced to move in with your parents, for example, maybe it's been many years since you lived with your parents. Maybe you've lost connection with your parents. And for the next six months, you're living there day in and day out, and you're connecting on a level that you haven't connected with in a long time. And you can sit there during those six months and you can lame it on the fact that you lost your house. You can lame it on the, on the way that, you know, life is terrible. Um, your, your ex ruined you by, you know, accidentally setting the house on fire. Or you could see the opportunity and the benefit and the tremendous blessing that you received by being able to connect with your parents for those six months. Uh, I remember buying a business um, 10 to 15 years ago it was a seafood business, and I didn't really want to be in the business. To be honest with you, I hated the business, but my dad worked there. Something fishy about that business. Yeah, something was very fishy about that. Yeah, it was a seafood. Um, but my dad worked there, and in hindsight, I look back, and I go, that gave me a tremendous opportunity to um, connect with him on deeper levels that I had never really connected with him before and so I just I just see that as a tremendous blessing in my life when at the time it was such a, a painful experience because I just didn't like the work and I just felt trapped but mm. I got the opportunity to spend uh, with my father and so I feel like <clears throat> we need to see the good we need to see the the positive and the opportunities that are presented to us even in in cases of of challenge and we can choose we can't focus on everything at all the time so we can either choose on how we're being a victim or we can choose to see how we're being set up or, and be giving a blessing so you're talking about balance then to balance work and family and you can't put one above the other well they're all connected for sure um, the more connected you are with your family the deeper relationships with you have your family the more at peace you can be when you're working 
um, the more you know vibrant you can be at work. I mean, if you're at work, I mean, I I went through a divorce. Okay, I know how stressful and how emotionally challenging it is to go through a divorce. If you're going through a challenging relationship at home, I mean, it just could kill your work life. Okay. And vice versa. If you're unemployed or if your business is doing terrible and you're losing money, it can just really hurt your relationships. So you definitely want to invest time uh, in your health, in your business, finances, in your relationships, and then also your spiritual connection. But as long as you push forward those four areas at the same time, they will help each other. And I'll give you an example on that. A lot of times you feel like, hey, I don't have time to work out because I've got all this work to do. When in reality, if you go and you work out and you exercise, you're going to be that much more vibrant to do the work that you need to do. You're going to be that much better with your mate when That's you're with right. your mate, you right. know. So the exercising helps you in all the other areas of your life. And the better you are at your financial life, it's going to help you in your relationships and your health too. So everything definitely connects. How did you identify your calling? And how do you recommend other people do the same thing? How do you know what your calling is? Well, this, okay, so this is coming from somebody who always felt like he was unworthy and no good. Um, I just always would ask the question, why am I here? What am I even good at? Because the things that I was good at, I never really identified as, as being financial things. Like, um, you know, hey, I... I'm really good at asking questions. I'm really good at, you know, just speaking. When, when I talk to somebody, they're like, wow, they just feel a connection there. So, but I didn't really know how I could turn that into money. So I didn't really know. And I had some opportunities to speak here and there. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of fun. Um, I've went through a lot of exploratory sessions of, of asking myself, what am I good at? What is my special sauce is a question I like to, uh, like to ask. Uh, what do I like to do? What are my experiences? Because I feel like sometimes in life we are given experiences that help us along the way. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the real answer to that question is there, it's a, an exploratory process. And if anybody wants to call me, I can actually help them through that, that process of basically answering a lot of questions, digging deep, and pulling out um, your experience, your skills, the things you're excited about, and your natural God-given gifts. And what, how I define that is by something that you didn't have to take a class for. Okay. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you want to take a comment from Facebook? Sure. Okay. Somebody doesn't agree with something you said. Okay. Uh, somebody, first name is Elsa. She, she writes, I don't agree with the real estate man. Why do you need a death sentence to... Uh, APPT estimate, I don't know what the APPT stands for. Approximately. Maybe? Approximately estimate what you have in your life. We should be doing that every day, counting our blessing. As she's referring to the first yeah. thing you opened right. with. No, and I agree with her 100%. 100%, I agree with you. Um, we shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, and that's something that I preach is, to, is gratitude. Um, I remember one of my first, I think it was the second show here, I talked about being grateful being able to wake up and being grateful. We shouldn't need a death sentence. Um, I mean, the truth is we're all on a death sentence. We just don't know the time, okay? Um, we really do need to appreciate what we have in this world and wake up every single day and be grateful for what's here. But when we do receive a death sentence, per se, that, that is the reality. So when you, what we can do is use that to our advantage, because whether we use it to our advantage or not, it has happened. It is here. So by using it to our advantage, we can make those last three years like a beautiful time versus a dreadful time. Yeah, and I, I think I saw what you were doing as an example of something that might motivate you, whether it's a death sentence or or an eviction notice, or, or anything that gets you off your butt. Mm -hmm. Not that a death sentence is that in the same context, but I, I you know, but thank you for, for Elsa for doing that. And everybody, we love when you contact us, and uh, it doesn't have to be positive. It can, it can be, uh, that was, you know, a constructive negative, I guess you would but say. But I agreed with her. I mean, what she said is absolutely truth for me. Absolute truth. I agree with her 100%. Well, another good show, William. Thank you so much for doing these shows. Uh, and remember, these shows are all recorded, and they're up on the Internet. In, in, the, in William's case, it's going to be like a day because we're going to put some extra uh, little tweaks on his. Do you give out your phone number again, if you could. Okay, 352-282-3080. 
and call us if you need that number repeated. And uh, you would call that number also to uh, invite William to be a speaker at your uh, venue, at your house, at your apartment. Where would you go? It's just a living facility, a church. Uh, a government organization. Rotary Club. William F. Styles. S-T-I-L-E-S. Thank you, William. Thank you. It's always good. We'll be right back.